Good morning. We're going to attempt to do Lamentations all in one video. Um, Lamentations is written by Jeremiah, and it's in a time um, that he is, the um, deportations of the people have gone to Babylon, and yet he is still um, in um, Judah, um, in Jerusalem. And it says that some people believe that he, he, writ, he wrote Lamentations, which is, it's kind of written in poetry format, um, kind of like the book of Job is kind of written as a poetry format. Um, and so you're, you're supposed to read Lamentations um, and feel the heart of God and the heart of, um, of, of sorrow Jeremiah has for his people. And it says that um, they think he wrote it in a cave or in hiding in the hill on the mountain where Jesus was died. It's called Golgotha. It's called the skull because if you look at the mountain where Jesus was crucified, the Mount of Calvary, and Golgotha, it looks like a skull is in the rock formation, and there's like these caves. And they think, and it's a high point out in Jerusalem where you can kind of overlook Jerusalem. They believe that he wrote it in that, like one of those caves in the in the mountain where Jesus was crucified, Golgotha. And so he's looking out and he's seeing all of the destruction that is happening to his people. Um, and so it, it just is... Uh, his broken heart and God's broken heart as he sees and talks about all the things that are happening to the people by the Babylonians is it says, Jerusalem once so full of people is now deserted. She who was once great among the nations now sits alone like a widow. Once the queen of all the earth, she is now a slave. She sobs through the night, tears stream down her cheeks. Among all of her lovers, the people that she thought were going to be her allies, there is no one left to comfort her. All of her friends have betrayed her and she became and became her enemies. Judah has been led away into captivity, oppressed with cruel slavery. She lives among foreign nations and has no place to rest. Her enemies have chased her down, and she has nowhere to, harm, um, to run or to turn. The roads to Jerusalem are in mourning, for crowds no longer come to celebrate the festivals. You know, the, um, the different Passovers, Feast of Trump, uh, Trumpets. The city gates are silent. Her priests groan. Her young women are crying for um, now bitter is her fate. Her oppressors have become her masters, and her enemies prosper, for the Lord has punished Jerusalem for her many sins. Her children have been captured and taken away to distant lands. All the majesty of beautiful Jerusalem has been stripped away. Her princes are like starving deer searching for pasture. They are too weak to run from the pursuing enemy. In the midst of her sadness and wandering, Ju Jerusalem remembers her ancient splendor. But now she has fallen to her enemy, and there is no one to help her. Her enemy struck her down and laughed as she fell. Jerusalem has sinned greatly, for she has been tossed away like a filthy rag. All who once honored her now despise her, for they have seen her stripped and naked and humiliated. All she can do is groan and hide her face. She defiled herself with immorality and gave no thought to her future. Now she lies in the gutter with no one to lift her out. Lord, to my misery, she cries, the enemy has triumphed. So basically, um, she, it says she gave no thought to her future, even though Jeremiah prophesied to two um, Jerusalem and to Israel, he prophesied for 40 years of what the Lord said was coming, but she didn't care. It said she gave no thought to her future. Um, she heard the messages of warning, but she just refused to listen. The enemy has plundered her completely, taken every precious thing she owns. She has seen foreigners violate her sacred temple, the place the Lord has forbidden them to enter. So she watched as the enemy came in and destroyed her temple. Her people groan as they watch um, search for bread. They have sold their treasures for food to stay alive. O oh Lord, look, she mourns, and see how I am despised. Remember, they were, they were being see, uh, besieged by the Babylonians for 18 months, and so they were starving inside the city walls with nothing to eat. Because <clears throat> famine and pestilence had come inside the city walls. Does it mean nothing to you, all of you who pass by? Look around and see if there is any suffering like mine, which the Lord brought on me when he erupted in fierce anger. He has sent fire from heaven that burns in my bones. He has trapped, paid, placed a trap in my path and turned me back. He has left me devastated, racked with sickness all day long. And so one of the things the pastor said is this is what sin does to us. Sin is like a burning in our bones. Um, it's a sickness within us. Um, and when we fall into sin, just like the enemies of Israel laughed at her, so people laugh at us when they see a Christian fall into sin. He wove my sins into ropes to hitch me to a yoke of captivity. The Lord strapped, sapped my strength and turned me over to my enemies. 
I am helpless in their hands. The Lord has treated my, treated my mighty men with contempt. At his command, a great army has come to crush my young warriors. The Lord has trampled his beloved city like grapes are trampled in a winepress. For all of these things I weep. Tears flow down my cheeks. No one is here to comfort me. Any who might encourage me are far away. My children have no future, for any, the enemy has conquered us. So this is the voice of Israel, basically um, in poetic format, the voice of Israel, the nation, is um, lamenting in, 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 in sorrow. Um, but also, too, when we sin, the consequence are affect our children. So it says, our children have no future. For the enemy has conquered us. So that's one of the things we have to think about is when we fall into sin, a lot of times those who suffer are our children. Jerusalem reaches out for help, but no one comforts her. Regardless, regarding his people Israel, the Lord has said, let their neighbors be their enemies. Let them be thrown away like a filthy rag. The Lord is right, Jerusalem says, for I rebelled against him. So when we sin, we know that the Lord is right. They know the Lord was right. He's just, he was just. For he, I rebelled against him. Listen, people everywhere... Look upon my anguish and despair, for my sons and daughters have been taken away to this captive to distant lands. I begged my allies for help, but they betrayed me. My priests and leaders starved to death in the city. Remember that those priests were false prophets. They were saying, nothing's going to happen. We're going to be fine. Even as they search for food to save their lives. Lord, see my anguish. My heart is broken and my soul despairs, for I have rebelled against you to in the streets the sword killed, and at home there is only death. Others heard my groans, but no one turned to comfort me. When my enemies heard about my troubles, they were happy to see what you had done. Oh, br oh, bring the day you promised when they will suffer as I have suffered. Look at all their evil deeds, Lord. Punish them as you have punished me for all my sins. My groans are many, and I'm sick at heart. For the Lord in his anger has cast a dark shadow over beautiful Jerusalem. The fairest of Israel's cities lies in dust, thrown down from the heights of heaven. In this in his day of great anger, the Lord has shown no mercy even to his temple, because the temple was completely destroyed. Whether mirth, without mercy, the Lord has destroyed every home in Israel. In his anger, he has broken down the fortress walls of beautiful Jerusalem. He has brought them to the ground, dishonoring the kingdom and its rulers. All the strength of Israel vanishes beneath his fierce anger. The Lord has withdrawn his protection as the enemy attacks. He consumes the whole land of Israel like a raging fire. And that's one thing we have to pray for America, that the Lord never withdraws his protection. Because when the Lord withdraws his protection, the enemy attacks. So Lord Jesus, we just pray for America that you would never withdraw your protection over America for the sake of your remnant that are here. Uh, verse 4, he bends his bow against his people as though he were their enemy. He, his strength is used against them to kill their finest youth. His fury is poured out like fire on beautiful Jerusalem. Yes, the Lord has vanquished vanquished Israel like an enemy. He has destroyed her palaces and demolished her fortresses. He has brought unending sorrow and tears upon beautiful Jerusalem. He has broken down the temple as though it were merely a garden shelter. The Lord has blotted out all memory of the holy festivals and Sabbath days. Kings and priests fall together before his fierce anger. The Lord has rejected his own altar. He despises his own sanctuary. He has given Jerusalem palaces to her enemies. They shout, in the Lord's temple as though it were a day of celebration. Now, why did the Lord despise his own temple and his own altar? Because they desecrated it. They did um, um, horrible things in his temple. They brought in pagan worship into the temple. They created, they did sexual immorality as they worshiped pagans, idols and stuff um, in, his, in his temple. So they desecrated his temple and he rejected his own altar and had the temple Babylonians destroy his temple. The Lord was determined to destroy the walls of beautiful Jerusalem. He made careful plans for their destruction and did what he planned. Therefore, the, the ramparts and the walls have fallen down before him. So, the, so who really destroyed the city and the temple? It says the Lord was determined to destroy the walls of beautiful Jerusalem. He made careful plans for their destruction and did what he had planned. So he used the Babylonians as a sword, but it was the Lord who planned it and um, planned for it. Jerusalem's gates have sunk into the, um, the ground. He has smashed their locks and their bars. Her, her kings and princes have been ex exiled to distant lands. Her law has ceased to exist. Her prophets receive no more visions from the Lord. And that's sad. Um, it says her, pro the, her prophets receive no more visions from the Lord. So the Lord kind of was quiet with them. The leaders of beautiful Jerusalem sit on the ground in silence. They are clothed in burlap and dust. 
throw dust on their heads. The young women of Jerusalem hang their heads in shame. I've cried until the, te I, the tears no longer come. My heart is broken. My spirit is poured out in agony as I see the desperate plight of my people. Little children and tiny babies are fainting and dying in the streets. So remember, J Jeremiah is writing this. His heart is broken, but also the Holy Spirit that has inspired this work is pouring out God's heart. God sees it says, God's spirit, my spirit is poured out in agony as I see the desperate plight of my people. Little children and tiny babies are fainting and dying in the streets. Um, the Lord's heart is broken because he warned them over and over again what would happen. And he just said, repent, repent, come back to me and these things won't happen to you. But the people refused to do it. And so the Lord's spirit is poured out in agony as he sees the desperate plight of his people. They cry out to their mothers, we need food and drink. Their lives ebb away in the streets. Like a life of a warrior wounded in battle, they gasp for breath as they collapse in their mother's arms. What can I say about you? Who has ever seen such sorrow? O daughter of Jerusalem, to what can I compare your anguish? O virgin daughter of Zion, how can I comfort you? For your wound is as deep as the sea, who can heal you? Your prophets have said so many foolish things, false, false to the core. They did not save you from, the, um, from exile by pointing out your sins. Instead, they painted false pictures, filling you with false hope. Now this, to me, when I read that, is a warning to pastors um, and to us if we do not preach truth, if we don't teach people truth. It says your prophets, think of it, your pastors, your religious teachers, your Bible teachers, um, um, your prophets have said so many foolish things of um, false to the core. They did not save you from exile by pointing out your sins. So they did not save you from hell by pointing out your sins. Instead, they painted the false pictures, filling you with a false hope. And that's a warning to us that we've got to tell people the truth. All who pass by jeer at you. They scoff and insult beautiful Jerusalem, saying, In this city called most beautiful in all the world, and joy in, uh, oh, they, they say, Is this a city called the most beautiful in all the world, or joy of all the earth? All of your enemies mock you. They scoff and snarl and say, we have destroyed her at last. We have long waited for this day. And it is finally here. So the enemies of Israel are rejoicing. Uh, but it is the Lord who did just as he planned. He has fulfilled the promises of disaster he made long ago. He has destroyed Jerusalem without mercy. He has ca caused their enemies to gloat over her and has given them power over her. So they think they're the ones that did it. But the Lord is saying, this was my plan. This is my doing because I'm going to punish my people for 70 years so that they can get them to rid themselves of this, of this idol worship. 18, cry aloud before the Lord, O walls of beautiful Jerusalem. Let your tears flow like a river day and night. Give yourself no rest. Give your eyes no relief. Rise during the night and cry out. Pour out your hearts like water to the Lord. Lift up your hands to him in prayer, pleading for your children, for in, for in every street they are faint with hunger. O oh Lord, think about this. Should you treat your own people this way? Should mothers eat their own children? Remember, they became cannibalists in between, during the siege. Behind the walls, they, they became cannibalists. Should mothers eat their own children, those they once bounced on their knee? Should priests and prophets be killed within the Lord's temple? See them lying on the streets, young and old, boys and girls, killed by the sword of their enemy. You have killed them in your anger, slaughtering them without mercy. You have invited terrors from all around, as though you were calling <clears throat> them to a day of feasting. In the day of the Lord's anger, no one has escaped or survived. The enemy has killed all the children who I, who I carried and raised. I am the one who has seen the afflictions that come from the rod of the Lord's anger. He has made me in, led me in darkness, shutting out all light. He has turned his hand against me again and again all day long. He has made my skin and flesh grow old. He has broken my bones. He has besieged and surrounded me with anguish and distress. He has buried me in a dark place like those long dead. So this is Jeremiah. Basically, Jeremiah is just in, a, in, in, in sadness and despair seeing what's happening. He has walled me in and I cannot, cannot escape. He has bound me in heavy chains. As though I cry and shout, he has shut up my prayers. He has blocked my way with a high stone wall. He has made my road crooked. He is hidden like a bear or a lion waiting to attack me. He has dragged me off the path and torn me to pieces, leaving me helpless and devastated. He has drawn his bow and made me a target for his arrows. He shot his arrows deep in my heart. My own people laugh at me. Remember, Jeremiah was mocked and laughed. My own people laugh at me all day long. They sing their mocking songs. He has filled me with bitterness and given me a bitter cup of sorrow to drink. He has made me chew on gravel. He has rolled me in dust. Peace has been stripped away, and I have forgotten what prosperity is. I cry out, my splendor is gone. Everything I hope for from the Lord is lost. 
The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. So he is like in a pit of despair, like when bad things are happening to us and we see the, like, the, the wickedness of the world, we're like, oh, I can't stand it here anymore. Like, like Lord, I feel like I'm just lost. Like I'm, I'm so sad. Um, and that's what Jeremiah is going through, you know, seeing all the horrible things. He's in this cave, he's looking out over Jerusalem and he's in this pit and he's like, he just is giving in to his despair. But then in verse 21, this is what he says. Yet, that's what we got to say, yet I will still dare to hope when I remember this. So yet, I'm in the pit of despair, I will still dare to hope when I remember this. So what do we got to remember when we're in a pit of despair? The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh every morning. So every morning we get a fresh start. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance, inheritance, my portion. Therefore, I will hope in him. So where do we put our hope? In Jesus, not in the things he's going to give us, not in the things that we see, not in earthly treasures. It says, therefore, I will put my hope in him. Our hope is in Jesus and him alone. The Lord is good to those who depend on him, those who wait on the Lord, those who seek the Lord, to those who search for him. So it is good to wait quietly for, from salvation for the Lord. And it is good for people to submit at an early age to the yoke of his discipline. So when we're in despair, we got to remember God's love and faithfulness. we got to put our hope in him and him alone, Jesus and nothing else. And then to wait and to seek him. So in our wait, in our despair, we're going to wait on the Lord. We're going to focus on him alone. We're going to seek him through the scriptures, through um, prayer. Um, we're going to seek him. And then we're going to wait quietly for salvation, for help from our distress to come from the Lord. Um, and it says it's good for people to submit at an early age to the yoke of his discipline. And if we could learn this stuff, the earlier the, uh, in age, the better. If we could learn to rely on the Lord in the hard times when we're young, uh, it's a good um, to submit to the Lord at early age, to the yoke of his discipline. Let them sit alone in silence beneath the Lord's demands. Let them lie face down in the dust for they... For there may be hope at last. Let them turn to the other cheek to those who strike them and to accept the insults of their enemies. Now that's something the Lord did, remember? Turn the other cheek to those who struck him. Um, for no one is abandoned by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he also shows compassion because of the greatness of his unfailing love. For he does not enjoy hurting people or causing them sorrow. Most of the time we do it to ourselves. Um, we're the ones who bring hurt and, and sorrow to ourselves by the choices we make. If people, crush under, if people crush underfoot all of the prisoners of the land, if they derive others, deprive of other, others of their rights in defiance of the Most High, if they twist justice in the courts, doesn't the Lord see all these things? Yes, the Lord sees everything that they're doing. Who can command things to happen without the Lord's permission? Does not the Most High set both calamity and good? Then why should we, mere humans, complain? when we are punished for our sins. So we know we're punished for our sins. Instead, let us test and examine our ways. Let us turn back to the Lord. Let us lift our hearts and hands to the God in heaven and say, we have sinned and rebelled and you have not forgiven us. So what is, what is it when we see the, the consequences of our own sin that have put us in a pit? It says, let's turn back to the Lord. Let's lift our hearts and our hands to the God in heaven and say, we have sinned and rebelled against you. And then we ask for forgiveness, we repent. Um, you have engulfed us with your anger, chased us down, and slaughtered us without mercy. You have hidden yourself in a cloud so our prayers cannot reach you. You have discarded us as a refuge and garbage among the nations. So he's back. So he went up to a, he was low. He remembered the Lord. He went high. And then he went back low again, which was what we can do. Um, tears streamed down my eyes because of the destruction of my people. So he's just sad for what's happening to his people. My tears flow endlessly. They will not stop until the Lord looks down from heaven and sees. My heart is breaking over the fate of all the women of Jerusalem. My enemies, who I have never harmed, hunt me down like a bird. They throw me into a pit and drop stones on me. The water rose over my head, and I cried out, this is the end. Remember, they threw him in that cistern, um, Jeremiah. But I called on your name, Lord, from deep within the pit. You heard me when I cried. Listen to my pleading. Hear my cry for help. Yes, you came when I called. You told me, do not fear, Lord. 
for Lord, you are my lawyer, plead my case. So when he was in that pit and he called out to the Lord for help, the Lord comforted him and said, do not fear. And then Jeremiah remembered, Lord, you are my lawyer. Um, that's Jesus. You plead my case, for you have redeemed my life. You have seen the wrong they have done to me, Lord. Be my judge and prove me right. So when we're being attacked by people or being um, um, people are coming against us, we have to remember who is our intercessor, who is our lawyer, Jesus. He's our advocate. He pleads our case. He redeems our life. Um, he sees the wrong that has been done to us. He is, will be our judge and he will prove us right. You have seen the vengeful plots my enemies have laid against me. Lord, you have heard my the vile names they call me. You know all about the plans they have made. My enemies whisper and mutter as they plot against me all day long. Look at them, whether they sit or stand. I am the object of their mocking and songs. Pay them back, Lord, for all the evil they have done. Give them hard and stubborn hearts and let that, and then let your curse fall on them. Chase them down in your anger, destroying them beneath their hearts, um, by, beneath the Lord's heavens. How the gold has lost its luster. Even the finest gold has become dull. The sacred judgments are scattering the streets. See how the, the precious children of Jerusalem, worth their weight in fine gold, are now treated like plots of clay made by the common potter. Even the jackals feed their young, not my people Israel. They ignore their children's cries like ostriches in the desert. The parched tongues of their little ones stick to the roof of their mouth and thirst. The children cry for bread, but no one has any to give them. The people who once ate the richest foods now beg in the streets for anything they can get. Those who once wore the finest clothes now search for garbage dumps for food. This kind of reminds me of Venezuela, you know, where Venezuela is one of the richest places in the world, has the best, one of the best economies. They have um, tons of oil. And now in, under socialism, the warning against socialism, um, they search, they're literally searching the garbage dumps for food. I mean, it's on the news. Um, not the fake news, it's on the real news. The guilt of my people is greater than that of Sodom and Gomorrah, where they utter dis a disaster struck in a moment and no one, no one, no hand offered help. Our princes were once glowed with health, brighter than snow, whiter than milk. Their faces were as ruddy as rubies, their appearance like fine jewels. But now their faces are blacker than soot. No one recognizes them in the streets. Their skin sticks to their bones as it's dry and hard of wood. Those killed by the sword are better off than those who die of hunger. I would say that's true. Starving, they waste away for lack of food from the fields. Tender-hearted women have cooked their own children. They have eaten them in, to survive the siege. But now the anger of the Lord is satisfied. His fierce anger has been poured out. He started a fire in Jerusalem that burned the city to its foundations. Not a king in all the earth, not one in all the world, would have believed that the enemy could have marched through the city, the gates of Jerusalem. Yet it happened because of the sins of her prophets and the sins of her priests who defiled the city by shedding innocent blood. That's like a warning to America there, man, because it says, who would have thought that we, that the enemy would be able to get through our gates, our defense systems? Look what happened on 9-11. Um, it said, um, it happened because of the sins of her prophets, those giving false messages and turning people away from the Lord because of the sins of her priests who defiled the city by shedding innocent blood. I mean, what have we done under the abortion thing? Um, they wandered blindly through the streets, so defiled by blood that they, no one dared touch them. Get away, the people shouted to them. You defiled, you touched us. So they fled to distant lands and wandered among foreign nations, but no one would let them stay. The Lord himself has scattered them, and he no longer helped them. People show no respect for the priests and no longer honor the leaders. We looked in vain for our allies to come and save us, but we were looking to nations that could not help us. We could go into the streets without danger to our lives. Our end was near, our days were numbered, we were doomed. Our enemies were swifter than the eagle in flight. If we fled to the mountains, they found us. If we hid in the wilderness, they were waiting for us. Our king, the Lord's anointed, the very life of our nation, was caught in their snares. We had thought that his shadow would protect us against the nation of the earth. So they're looking to man. They were looking to their kings instead of looking to the Lord to protect them. Are you rejoicing in the land of Earth, the old people of Edom? But you too must drink from the cup of the Lord's anger. You too will be stripped naked in your drunkenness. O oh, beautiful Jerusalem, your punishment will end. You will soon return from exile. But Edom, your punishment is just beginning. Soon, your many sins will be exposed. Lord, remember what has happened to us. See how we have been disgraced. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers. Our homes to foreigners. We are orphaned and fatherless. Our mothers are widowed. We have half to pay for water to drink. That's Venezuela right there, man. They're having to pay for water to drink. And even firewood is expensive. 
Those who pursue us are at our heels. We are exhausted, but we are given no rest. We submitted to Egypt and Assyria to get enough food to survive. Our ancestors sinned, but they have died, and we are suffering the punishment they deserved. Slaves have now become our masters. There is no one left to rescue us. We hunt for food at the risk of our lives, for violence rules the countryside. Okay, I keep, I'm saying this again and again, but that's Venezuela, man. They're having to hunt for food at the risk of their lives because the government will not let them go and get food. Um, that's the danger of socialism. And when you look at socialism, it's because people want a free ride. People want the easy stuff. Just like Israel, these people, they want, oh, it's all good. Everything's going to be good. Um, but then what happens? Food runs out um, and money runs out. Um, it's a lie of the enemy to get people entrapped into slavery. Okay, enough of that. Our, um, our enemies rape the women in Jerusalem, the younger girls in all the towns of Judah. Our princes are being hanged by their thumbs and our elders are treated with contempt. Young men are led away to work in millstones and boys stagger under heavy loads of wood. The elders no longer sit in the city gates. The young men no longer dance and sing. Joy has left our hearts. Our dancing has turned to mourning. The garlands have fallen from the, our um, heads. Weep for us because we have sinned. Our hearts are sick and weary, and our eyes grow dim with tears. For Jerusalem is empty and desolate, a place haunted by jackals. But Lord, you remain the same forever. Your throne continues from generation to generation. Why do you continue to forget us? Why have you abandoned us for so long? Restore us, O Lord, and bring us back to you again. Give us back the joys we once had. Or have you utterly rejected us? Are you angry with us still? Um, and so basically the Lord used the 70 years to bring them, um, to take them away and cleanse them from their idol worship. Um, but that is um, our hope um, for us to, it says the Lord, you remain the same forever. Your throne continues from generation to generation. Um, and so we have to pray for our nation too and for Israel. But that the Lord does not, that we don't abandon the Lord because it's us who abandons him, that we turn away um, from the evil and the wicked when we ask for forgiveness as a nation, as people, um, and that the Lord restores us and brings us back the joy we once had. Uh, so Lord Jesus, we just pray for our nation. We pray, Lord Jesus, that we would not turn to the evils of socialism, Lord Jesus, that, that is a trap from the enemy. We pray, Lord Jesus, that the minds and the eyes of the young people would be opened up to the horrors that are awaiting them if we go that way. I pray, Lord Jesus, that they would, their eyes would be opened to the truth and the dangers um, the, uh, that the enemy is luring them with um, of a free ride. Lord Jesus, I pray for um, just our children as they go into the world that's trying to indoctrinate them. Lord Jesus, I pray protection over them. I pray that they would see truth. I pray that they would have a love for your word. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just have mercy on America. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would have mercy on Israel. I pray, Lord Jesus, that for our president and for the prime minister of Israel, that you would bind them and that everything that they would do, Lord Jesus, would be glorifying to you, that they would be led by your Holy Spirit. I pray they would continue to pr protect our nation from the evil plots of the Antichrist. That's, um, the spirit of there is already at rise. So, Lord Jesus, I just pray for your divine protection over our nations, over our families, over our homes. We pray the blood of the Lamb over our homes and our children, our spouses, and ourselves. Watch over us today as we go. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, love you guys. Bye.